In this video, I'd like to show you some of the most common PCB design mistakes I oftentimes see in shared PCB designs. Of course, I'd like to show you how to improve on these, how to improve things such as signal integrity, EMI, and so forth. We're going to cover some main topics such as the correct trace widths, VS sizes and placement, clearances between traces, what you should pay attention to when you're doing copper fills and copper pores, and things, smaller things such as silk screen and so forth. As usual, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, so thank you very much to them. If you would like to order any PCBs or want to use any of my reference designs, you can find them uh, under github.com slash PMS67. And I have things such as the Little Brain um, sensor board, which is an STM32F4, and STM32F1 breakout boards, and so forth. So all the Gerber files and assembly files are there. And then you can follow my other videos to see how you can actually uh, use JLC PCB to order with assembly. The board you're seeing in this video is actually part of my PCB design course, which I'll be releasing in the next month or two. If you haven't filled in the survey yet and you'd like to put your name on the list for when to be notified when it comes out, please do so and I'll leave the link in the description. So far we've gotten over a thousand responses, which has been great. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to sharing the course with you. A tool I often use when designing PCBs is this one here called the Saturn PCB Design Toolkit. And this is really useful and it's free because it has so many things you can calculate. For example, what conductor impedances you might need for controlled impedance traces. It tells you things about crosstalk, uh, differential pairs, and so on. So I really recommend you do download this um, from saturnpcb.com and have a little play around. The first point I'd like to talk about is trace widths. And as you can see in this PCB, I have a variety of different trace widths I'm using. For example, thicker traces here, very thick traces in the power section, and some thinner traces down here. Now what I like to do in general for signal traces is always route them as 50 ohm controlled impedance traces. Of course, if it requires something else, if you require 60 ohm or 45 ohm um, trace impedance, then of course route it as that. But in general, I always set up a track width, for example, in KiCat up here, uh, which will be a 50 ohm trace. And I'll generally start off with that for my signal traces. The second point is thick and thin traces. So for example, power, you, anytime you have higher currents, you want to make your traces thick or wider rather. And again, you can use the PCB design calculator and click on uh, conductor properties. And you can find out for a given conductor width and a, a given copper thickness, you can find out how much current that can carry for a certain temperature rise. So as you can see here in the power section, I've done copper poles or rather wide traces. And for something like signal traces, which, are, which have virtually no current consumption at all, I will do much thinner traces. A further point is that regardless with which PCB manufacturer you go with, they will always have some sort of form of capabilities section. So if we scroll down, we can actually see they have something on minimum trace width and minimum spacing. And my recommendation is to always try and stay away from the minimum trace width, right? So even though they can do 3.5 mils or 0.09 millimeter trace width, you don't want to stress these uh, manufacturing uh, capabilities. The next point or common mistake I'd like to bring up is that of clearance. In particular, trace to trace clearance. So for example, the distance between one trace to the other. Oftentimes you'll see PCB designs where there's virtually no space between these different traces. And this can, this can be really problematic for signal integrity reasons and so forth. Predominantly because you'll get a lot of crosstalk. And you can actually calculate the amount of crosstalk using, again, the Saturn PCB design toolkit and the crosstalk calculator. And you can see, depending on how your conductor spacing is between different traces, you can see how much, what the voltage is that's actually coupled between them. And this can actually be really significant and cause problems in digital and analog systems. A typical rule is to space traces at least three times the width of the trace away from each other. So if this has a certain width, I'll go three steps to the left or three steps to the right, and then put my next trace there. And this makes sure you will have a uh, much smaller or reduced crosstalk than you would if you had the traces running right next to each other. For example, when I'm coming out for this I squared C line up here, one is going straight up, but as soon as I get out of the pad, I'm going left to give myself more space between these two traces. I could have, of course, just rooted it straight up and left, but that means I would have all these parallel sections running next to each other. Whereas if I just go straight up and left, I immediately create space between these two traces. Now clearance, of course, doesn't just apply to traces, it also applies to components. So this board is actually a mixed signal PCB. So I have an analog section and a digital section. And you can see I've tried to 
keep the digital section and the power section as far, as far away as I can from this analog section. It's pretty much all about the space, right? You want as much space as you can between traces and between different sections, for example, analog and digital. So as long as you can maintain a large enough distance, you will minimize your crosstalk. And that's generally the goal. If you have the space, use it. So the next item on the list is vias and via placement. And as you can see here, I've got quite a number of vias. Uh, this in particular is either four or six layer board. So I have internal ground and 3.3 volt planes, which I can then essentially just dig down into and connect to my capacitors, or whatever needs power or ground. So for example, I have these bypass or decoupling capacitors close to my main uh, signal processing chip or MCU. And you can see how I've placed them. First of all, the via is very close to the pad. It's not in the pad, but it's as close as I, I can get it without it being in the pad. Once you have that really close, then you have a very thick or rather wide trace going into the pad. And this makes sure you're, you're minimizing your inductance. Vias typically always come in pairs. So you always have, a, for example, a signal via, and then you'll have a ground via. Same with power. So you have a power via, or 3.3 volt via, and a ground via. And what you want to do to actually minimize the inductance is not just uh, connect them with thick traces and have them close to the pads, but you always want these via pairs close to each other. So you want ground and 3.3 volts, for example, really close to each other to minimize their inductance. And you can see with all these bypass and decoupling capacitors, this is exactly what I have here, here, and here. I would really recommend you uh, to check out this video. It's how to achieve proper grounding with uh, a PCB design guru, Rick Hartley. And he gave a presentation uh, to one of Altium's um, events. And you can see that on Altium's YouTube channel. And this is possibly the best uh, video on PCB design ever watched. And honestly, the two hours and 20 minutes are well worth your time. And you'll know a lot more about how to design PCBs and how they work. So I really, really recommend you check this out. So let's briefly talk about copper fills and copper pores. So generally in a multi-layer PCB, you will fill internal layers, depending on your stack up, of course, with ground or VCC and so forth. Here, this board, as I said before, is a mixed signal PCB. So I have an analog section and a digital section. And what will you notice here, I've just highlighted one of the internal layers, my main uh, ground plane. It is a solid continuous ground plane. I am not splitting it. And in pretty much 99.9% .9 of all cases, you shouldn't split your ground plane, even with a mixed signal PCB with analog and digital domains. As I said before, the most important thing is that you keep space between analog and digital sections, and that will reduce your crosstalk. There is no point in putting a split uh, ground plane in most scenarios. There are exceptions, of course, but in most scenarios you want a solid ground plane. On the other hand, here is one of my internal layers, which is the power plane, or power planes rather. And you can see I have split and sectioned this into different areas, depending on the voltages. So here I might have 3.3 volts for my digital, here I have, for example, 9 volts for my analog, and I have the analog 3.3 volts. Now this is okay to split if, but only if, you don't run any signals which are directly adjacent on the next layer across these splits. So as you can see here, the next layer would be my signal layer, and I'm not running any signals across these splits in the planes. Finally, let's talk about silkscreen. And this might be a very small and minor detail, but I think it's important that you get your boards produced correctly. One thing I see a lot is that people put silkscreen, so for example, these designators here, on pads, and that won't work in the manufacturing process, so they won't be printed and your silkscreen will be cut off. So don't put silkscreen on pads. And secondly, try not to put silkscreen on holes or vias. So you can get vias tented, which means they're covered with solder mask, and then you can um, uh, usually put um, silkscreen on vias, but it won't look as nice. So as you can see here, I've tried to move the silkscreen so it's just barely on a via, and that'll then come out better than if it were directly on the hole but never sacrifice component placement for silkscreen placement, right? The silkscreen is there as a guide, but it's not as important, of course, as the component placement.